that uh, as soon as I um, use the firearm to protect my life, that charges would be laid. That's the typical process uh, that, that goes on in this country. The Crown seemed to have an agenda to make an example of me that would put the fear into every firearms owner in Canada that you are not allowed to defend your life. Ian Thompson spoke to him last week on the program. He is a man who has been punished just, just through having to go through the process of defending himself. And he has to defend himself against the Crown Prosecutor upset that Thompson defended himself against four men firebombing his home. We are at a state in Canada where they don't want you using firearms for anything, ever. And that's the push. And as we look at what's happening in the United States, that's where they're headed. So I've got a warning to my American friends. Registration will lead to confiscation. And if you don't believe me, just look at what's happened here. Now, are they going towards registration in the United States? Well, according to the Washington Post, the Obama administration is considering a national database of all firearms in the U.S. to, quote, track the movements and sale of weapons, unquote. And if such a database comes to fruition, it will lead to confiscation. Last year, we ended our national long gun registry here in Canada. It was a national database of every rifle and shotgun in the country that was supposed to help police well, track the movement and sale of weapons. Now, when it was introduced 20 years ago, critics said, hold on, hold on. If we register the firearms, they're going to be confiscated. And that criticism was just dismissed. It was rid ridiculed. Yet that's what was happening right up until the long gun registry was dismantled. As recently as last winter, law-abiding gun owners who had complied with the registry were having their rifles confiscated. In late 2011, hundreds, if not thousands of people who had legally purchased the Army Jagger AP-80, a 22 caliber variant of the AK-47, were informed that their rifles had been deemed illegal and must be surrendered. The letter read, you are required by law to return your firearm registration certificates without delay, either by mail to the address shown in the top left corner of this page or in person to a peace officer or firearms officers. You have 30 days to deliver your firearm to a peace officer, firearms officer, or chief firearms officer, or to otherwise lawfully dispose of them. That was sent out by the Canadian Firearms Centre. The reason for the need to surrender what had been legal firearms was simply cosmetic. The AP-80 looked too similar to the AK-47. There were no interchangeable parts between the two rifles. The rifles were vastly different in terms of what kinds of ammunition they used. They also had vastly different uses, but they looked the same. And that was enough. That was enough. And what was, is more worrisome was that the decision to reclassify what had been a, a legal rifle for years and years, that decision was made by a bureaucrat not by elected officials. There was no debate, no vote. It was just a bureaucratic decision. Somebody that felt the AP-80, legally owned for decades, was now too dangerous to be privately owned by law-abiding Canadians. Of course, confiscation of firearms could just be the start of it all. Confiscations of homes and cars could also head down to the United States. Former Marine Joshua Boston recently spoke, wrote a scathing response to California Senator Dianne Feinstein's gun control proposal saying that he would not register his guns. Here's part of that letter. He said, I am the man who fought for my country. I am the man who learned. I am an American. You will not tell me that I must register my semi-automatic AR-15 because of the actions of some evil man. Joshua Boston, Corporal, United States Marine Corps. Well, if he goes through with that, and the United States goes through with setting up a national registry, it could cost him everything. Don't believe me? Look at Bruce Montague. He's a gunsmith from Dryden, Ontario, and he faces the possibility of having his home seized for failure to register his firearms. Montague made a decision, a purely political decision, not to register or to let his registries lapse. He wanted to challenge the constitutionality of Canada's national gun registry. When his constitutional challenge failed and Montague was convicted, the government of Ontario moved to seize its, his home under their proceeds of crime legislation. They were treating what was essentially a paperwork criminal as if it were a drug lord. That's the kind of person the proceeds of crime law is intended to prosecute. 
Now, if the United States follows Canada's lead in registering all guns, putting them into a national database, then confiscation of rifles and shotguns won't be far behind.